Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Samuel Emmanuel Dickerson Jr. from Better You Better Society. And today I'm interviewing the real DP. Can't complain, man. It's a long, long day, and uh, just pushing forward, trying to continue to be great every day. Gotcha. Man, I, I appreciate you doing this. Um, you're definitely somebody that I've been looking up to for years, mm. you know, on social media, not just, you know, with the fitness, but just with the level of creativity and um, the excellence that I've seen you doing your work. So, I appreciate that. Like, I'm super appreciative of you doing this. Uh, no problem. Anytime. Anytime. All right. So, um... Tell me about yourself. Uh, that's a very general question, I but yeah, I, uh, I, I guess to, to sum me up in, in this fashion uh, for the context of this interview, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm no different than anybody else. You know, I've been placed in, or I've placed myself in uh, situations or um, life situations that, you know, I, I kind of had to respond to and have a game plan and some type of action plan in place. Uh, some of them worked, some of them didn't work. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me is I always had what I wanted to do in mind. Um, now, prior to me getting in fitness and me being my own entrepreneur, this was never in the equation. This was in a million years, if you would ask me 10 years ago, would I be sitting here today talking to you doing something in fitness? No, it probably wouldn't even be a thought in my head. Um, but situations that, you know, I placed myself in and circumstances that, that uh, transpired, you know, in my previous career brought me to this place. And, um, you know, I, I get a lot of people, they'll, they'll ask, you know, you know, they kind of want to do what I want to do. And that's, it's always a funny statement to me because it's not easy, you know, and a lot of people may see what I do or look and see what I do and say, you know, I want to do that. It, it may come off or look easy, um, but a lot of the back end side of it, a lot of the, uh, trials and tribulations that's, that's come from it, um, a lot of people, they, they don't see that part, you know. Like what? So I'll give you an example. Um, I went to school four years, graduated with two degrees, went straight into a career, uh, worked my way up into an operations manager position and got fired after seven years. Uh, went over to a whole different company, hated it, same, same type of uh, company in a sense, Lowe's and Home Depot were the two companies. Um, and hated it and got myself fired from there as well. So those two situations, um, the last uh, me being fired, my son was uh, about to be born. This was November, October that I was released and my son was born in April. So knowing that, you know, I had a, a child about to be born and I'm the bread and winner, the bread and bread and butter of the household. It put me in a, a very tough spot, you know, to say two, two, two jobs, two careers that I've ever had out of college, um, I've been fired from. And if you ask me, and this is not to never point the finger, um, but if I was really going into detail and give you the situation, you, you know, a lot of people, they'll, they'll relate and say, you know, those are just some bad situations you were placed in. And um, from there, I didn't have a, I didn't have a plan. You know, I knew, again, I was a prior, prior basketball player. Um, I always worked out. That was just my 
therapy from when I got off of work. That was my hobby. You know, when I got off of work, I worked out and I played basketball still. And um, having my career taken from me, I went to the gym, you know, and young lady walks up and she's like, hey, I see you, you train people. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, no, nah, you just see me work out with people. I have no understanding of training whatsoever. Um, never looked at a trainer and said, I want to be that guy when I grow up. That was not, you know, he wasn't the thing that I wanted to be. So, uh, you know, leaving the, the job and not having uh, a, a career, I took, you know, I took the opportunity. And the funny thing is, God works in mysterious ways. And, and when I say that, you know, I asked her, the first thing I asked her, I said, okay, well, what can you afford for training? She's like, $30. This is Valdosta, Georgia, Deep South. I'm like, all right, cool, thirty dollars a session. That's not bad. She's like, no, thirty dollars a week. This is your first client. This is my first client. I'm like, uh, all right, you know what I'm saying? At this point, I don't, I don't have any income coming in. Um, so I took it. You know, I took it. Worked with her. She lost some weight. Didn't know nothing I was doing. I was just putting her through basic routines, basic stuff. And uh, she lost some weight. Her friends started coming along. I'm like, all right, this may turn into something. So I went and got certified. Uh, started working for a gym. I said, well, you know, if I'm gonna do this, let me see how this gym is ran. You know, and I went to the owners of the gym and said, hey, you guys mind if, uh, if I train here? And they're like, yeah, you can have all our training books. And if there's anybody that comes in, you can have them. Um, because they didn't think I was going to, nothing was going to, you know, transpire from that. And I'm like, bet, you know, I got the book, read, read it, read, you know, the outline, the format, the structure of everything, and I just applied it. You know, everybody that walked, I would go to the gym, I would be at the gym five o'clock in the morning, just sitting, waiting as people come in. Hey, how you doing? My name is Daryl Patterson. I'm a. And how old were you when you were doing this? This was probably, I want to say, 31. 31. Mm-hmm. Cause like I'm hearing like a lot of like work ethic, even with your first client. Right. You know, she lost weight. For her to have lost weight, you had to have been like excellent with her and like really working with her and like right. focused on it. So, yes, um, work ethic I think is a huge cornerstone in my success. Um, because that's that's one thing that I, I pride myself on. A lot of people are like, man, do you ever stop? Do you ever like? are you ever not working? I'm like, nah, I'm always working. Whether I'm driving, I'm working. If I'm on a plane, I'm working. Like, I'm always in work mode. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Um, but that's where my work ethic comes from. Um, you put me in a room full of entrepreneurs, at some point, you're gonna hear my name. I'm gonna, my presence is gonna be known because my work ethic is gonna shine through. Whether it's I'm answering questions, I'm raising my hand or I'm speaking up, I'm talking. Um, I've come from a leadership role. I played basketball as a point guard. So I've, the leadership skill trait has always been instilled in me from an early age. I was a manager. I worked my way up to an operations manager. So the role of leading, um, the work ethic to keep leveling up has always been there. So, you know, and I try to explain that to people, you know, it's, it's one thing to want to be an entrepreneur. It's another thing to want to be an entrepreneur with a lazy work ethic, you know, and I see it all the time. Yeah. I see it all the time. People come and they'll ask me, you know, can you be my mentor? Yeah, no problem. How much do you charge? I'm going to charge you anything because your work ethic is going to show me how much I need to instill in you. I'm gonna ask you, what have you done? Oh, I haven't done anything. I just, I wanted you to give me some guidance. That's the problem right now. That's the problem. I have no idea what you wanna do. You have no idea what you wanna do. So how can I guide you blindly into your success? It's impossible. So what advice would you give somebody who like wants to be more of a leader and for somebody who wants to increase their work ethic? Um, I think work ethic is something that you either have or you don't. Um, and, and when I say that, I say, we've all worked with people. We've all, uh, and, and let me say this, 
you have to you have to be you have to want to be an entrepreneur in something that you really have an interest in you see what i'm saying like i, I see a lot of people who want to be their own boss because oh chris and them over there they're doing this and they making money i, I want to do what chris and them doing but Chris and them got a passion for that. You know, Chris and them spending night, countless hours working on that passion. You're watching them work. I have no idea what people are doing in my, in my field right now. I have no idea. Because I'm, I'm not concerned with what everybody else is doing. I had a mission from, the, from day one. When I said I wanted to be, when I said I wanted to start training, the training part was me getting my foot in the door. The goal was to build or to be the next beach body of the culture. But I had to have a path to get there. I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I knew my end goal was to be the next beach body. So you're not focused on what anybody else is doing? No, I, don't, I can care less what everybody else is doing. Because that's nine times 10, that's not their goal. They want to either be the best trainer they want to either have the best online program. They either want to be known. They either want to make money. But I'm looking long term because when I got into fitness, it's like, I don't know nothing about this. But I kept hearing P90X. I kept hearing all these different things. I'm like, all right. But he don't look like me. He don't talk like me. He don't move like me. And none of the people around him or like any of the people that I deal with. It's cool though, I like what y'all doing over here, but I don't wanna do like, like y'all doing it. You know what I'm saying? So my whole goal was always to put myself in position so I can have a, a business that offered what I would've wanted and what I, I want for the community. Um, and that's always been my focus, I just knew there were steps that I had to take to get there. You know, there was things that I had to experience to get there. I had to be successful at training. I had to figure out how to teach classes. I had to uh, figure out how to transform people's bodies. I mean, because hell, if I'm gonna run a business like that, you have to know how to get people results. Um, so I would have to dig into my craft and I would have to take it one step at a time. And once one thing was perfected, then I moved to something else. And once that was perfected, then I moved to something else. Yeah, you know, that's powerful. Because that's been something that I needed to work on like my entire life. Mm. When I first got into entrepreneurship about four or five years ago, my biggest issue was not work, that work ethic, but it was trying to juggle too many things and trying to skip steps. Right. Just trying to rush through it. Right. So after years of, you know, like friends drilling in my head, like, yo, focus on one thing, perfect that one thing, be excellent with that one thing. Now I'm learning how to like slow down, do one step, you know, do one interview at a time, make it as best as it could be, then do the next thing. Right. So, like, you realizing that, like, was that something that you kind of always had with you that you learned at a young age? Um, I think it kind of just came with time. It came with conversations with other people. It came with uh, experiences that, that I had. It came with loss of money, you know, it, 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 a lot of different things kind of started building a, a certain type of mindset to say, okay, and it, it's a beautiful thing, and I say this, the, the place we're having this interview at, this, the guy who owns this gym used to work for me, and his work ethic I seen from day one, which is why me and him jailed so, so much, and I always tell him, I, I just always seen him and me, or me and him, I should say. And, um, you know, younger, way younger. I wish I started at his age because I probably would have been way further along by now. But I will always tell him, like, yo, just be patient, dog. Like, be patient. I, I get, I understand what you're trying to do. Trust me, I understand what you're trying to do. But perfect this one thing first. Then, then move on to this. And to now, be, and I'm calling him, like, yo, can I, can I come over and, you know, do an interview at your gym, it feels good, you know what I'm saying? Because he's learned, he's grown, and we've had conversations, and sometimes it's like, you know, you gotta let certain things happen, and come back like, yo, I, and I, he's like, don't say it, I'm like, 
but you know, I'm trying to help you out. But sometimes you, you gotta you gotta learn those things, and uh, it's good though because I, I see him go through. I see the growth, and it's it's beautiful to see what he has now was way better than what I had. Way better than what I had, and um, I applaud that. Like when I walk in this gym, it's it's a good feeling because it's like he listened. He listened, he learned, and he applied, and then he made it his own. You know what I'm saying? And I'll, I will forever respect him for that because I work or I've, I've dealt with a lot of people who, like jacking, you know what I'm saying? They'll jack you for certain things that you're doing, and then they'll, they'll say it's that this is what they did, and they pay no homage to you whatsoever. And... Um, that was never his, his, you know, his, his angle. He always wanted to learn. He always was asking questions. He was always in my ear about stuff. I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? It's a good idea. Like, try it out. You know what I'm saying? You would never know if you, if you don't try. Like, you got a 50, 50 percent chance you're either going to fail or you're going to succeed. So take it. You know what I'm saying? Don't not do it. And I think a lot of people fail because, or don't succeed because they don't even take the initiative to even try because they talk themselves into it so much that it's not going to happen, but they don't even take the initiative step to make it happen. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you this, like, if off the top of my head I'm thinking about opening the gym, and I'm just thinking about opening the gym, that goal could be intimidating. Right. You know, but just starting, taking one step at a time, making that first phone call, you make slow progress, and then it becomes a lot more attainable. Right. Mentally. So. Sometimes you just got to put your feet in the fire. Yeah. You know, because it is. It's... To take on a, 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 a business and open it up, once you hand over that money, it's game time. Like, you got to have an action plan in play. You got to have some stuff. That, and that's scary to a lot of people, but it's also going to put you in position. Now it's time to get on your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Now it's time to, all right, you've made the initial step. What's next? Did you have a game plan? You know, and... It gets real when you take that, when you pass that money over and you shake your hand and you sign on the dotted line. It's real from that point on. Yeah. Let's talk about having a plan, like planning out your year, having goals, just having a clear path that you want to follow. Like, like I said, for me, that never was my strong suit in my early days of entrepreneurship. Mm. Now that I have plans, like I've made way more progress right. than I was making, you know, back then. So let's talk about how important that is. Uh, I think it's very important. I think you should always have a, a goal of where you want to be. And I'll, I'm, I go, I reverse in how I go through everything. So I find out what my goal is. And then I figure out what are the steps that I had to take to get to that point. A lot of people are like, okay, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this so I can get here. I've already thought what the goal is, the things that I want to fall up under that goal, now there's so many things, it's a, it's a big triangle. You know, that's the goal. These are all the different things that are lined up. So it, everything starts spreading out. It becomes a big pyramid. So now I have to figure out, okay, I'm gonna tackle this one, perfect that one. Remember then this one, this one, this one, then you move up a level. Then this one, this one, then you move up a level. Then this one, this one, then you move up another level. And by the time you look back, you've built a process and you've built a business and you have a structure and you have a business plan and everything works you know what I'm saying because you went from the top down and you worked your way across perfected all those things then went from here so that that would be you know how I personally go about it not saying that that's a right I mean that's the right way or wrong way I never wrote read a book on it <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's working for you, so yeah you so it, it, that would be how, how, how I would do it you know and I explain to people gotcha so um you're very like focused, you're very strategic. What stops you from making like emotional like moves? You know, like there will be sometimes when, you know, things aren't really happening in my life and I just I would feel antsy. I just wanna post something on social media. I just wanna hurry up and rush and just make something happen. How do you how do you deal with that? Do you allow yourself to make those emotional moves or um from time to time I will. Um I think I've gotten to a point now where I kind of think out my post. Um, I kind of think before I react um, and what I should respond to, what I shouldn't respond to, where I should draw energy from, where I shouldn't draw energy from. 
Um, so it, it's definitely a growing process that I'm still going with. You know, sometimes you, you know, people might tap on the right nerve and you kind of, you just want to respond. Um, sometimes you want to let people know who you are, you know what I'm saying, where you stand. But sometimes it, it doesn't need to be said as well. You know, sometimes your, your actions speak for themselves. Sometimes, um, and I, I'm, I'm a firm believer, I always tell people, I can show you better than I can tell you. Or I can lead you by example. You know, um, I ain't gonna talk you to death. I can actually show you, you can watch me and see, you know, the progress and, and, and what I'm doing. And I think that's a, a good trait of a leader because I'm also willing to, to follow and listen as well. And I feel like, you know, in order to be a good leader, you have to be able to listen and you have to be able to follow at some point in time. And um, everybody that I work with, I follow them in some way, shape, or form. I've learned from them in some way, shape, or form. Whether they were coming up under me or not, I'm always learning something from somebody and trying to figure out what can I take from you that's gonna help me grow? You know, what kind of conversations and perspectives can do you have that, you know what, I may not look at it that way. Yeah. You know, and looking, you know, just a, a better way to grow and expand the way that I think, you know, because I'm not going to say everything I think is, is correct or everything that I do is right. You know, somebody that's coming up may have a great idea. It's like, no, I never thought of that, you know, and I'm going to try that out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Me personally, I think that is one of the most powerful leadership qualities, being able to see quality in John that you like, a quality in Susan that you like, like you can see the way Mike talks to people and incorporate that in your own life. You right. Know, like, short. So I think that's powerful right there. Yeah. Like it's, it's everybody pulls something from somebody. You know, everybody learns. Kobe pulled stuff from Michael Jordan. Jordan said, in his, Jordan said, said it himself. Kobe probably beat me in the game on one and one because he took all my damn moves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you always pull stuff from other people, um, but when you pull it, do you create it and mesh it into your own perspective and your own way of how you want to put it up, pull it out? Like, I'll give you an example. I teach a class called Levels, which is a uh, step aerobics class. But it's not like how everybody else does it. You know, when you people see it, they're like, yo, y'all look like y'all dancing. Well, we kind of are, you know what I'm saying? I like to dance, I have fun, so I'm trying to figure out a way to make this fun for me. Because I know if I have fun doing it, y'all gonna have fun doing it. You know what I'm saying? But I also want to make it different from what everybody else is doing. And ain't nobody doing this. So, you know, I have my own call out. Step aerobics is uh, universal call outs. So let's just say uh, there is a certain move that if somebody says it, no matter where you are, everybody would do that same move. Okay, if I call something out, it's not going to be that the name of that, you know what I'm saying? And I might put a little different twist on it. So in my class, like a lot of people are like, yo, you make some call outs I never heard before. I'm like, well, you probably never seen it done like this as well. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that, that's true, you know. And so I look at stuff and I, again, I try to make it my own and um, do it from there because I think the biggest thing is you have to create your own lane. And I always tell that to people, you know, never try to get in anybody else's lane because the problem is you don't have no idea where they're going. You know, and that's the worst thing you can do is get behind somebody and have no idea where they're going. Rather, when you create your own lane, you know exactly where you want to go. You know exactly how fast you want to go. You know you can pull over and detour, stop, slow down when you want to. But if I'm following behind somebody else going 100 miles an hour and they decide to stop, I'm going to crash. But you know what? You need confidence for that because... You do. You know, like, let's see with this interview. I could want to follow Joe Rogan's format. I want to follow whoever else's format. Right. And I know that their format is working for them. Right. So it's seductive to try to follow what they're doing. For me to say, you know what, I'm gonna do my own thing, there's a good chance that this might not work. Right. So the amount of confidence that I have to have in myself to be able to say, you know what, I'm gonna do this and I gotta be happy with the end result. Yeah. Whether or not I get 10 views or a million views, that's scary. Watch this. If me and you, me and you never, you've never seen me run before 
and I say I'll challenge you to a sprint, who you gonna bet on? Me. Every single time. I tell the people that every single time. I'm gonna bet on myself more faster than I bet on anybody else. You a man just like I'm a man. You, fi you figured out a perfect way to do something that worked for you. What makes it, why can't I do the same thing? You know, and that's what I, I try to, you know, instill in people and, and, and tell them like, man, you gotta create your own lane, like. But what you just said, you said, you a man just like I'm a man. That mindset, a lot of people don't have. Right. Like that confidence, like sometimes I'll be working out, we'll be like, yo, oh, I wake up at 3.30. People be like, yo, I don't know how you do it. And I'm like, how do you as a man let those words come out of your mouth? Right. Like I can do something that you can't. Right. I would never. Yeah. <laughs> so like, just having that mindset, that's like, you know, that kind of, it's like that pride in yourself. Right. It's like, I'm not gonna let you do something that I'm, what? And, and that's the thing, I think that you have to be realistic with yourself and you have to know what lanes you're trying to get in. You know, I'm not about to go in the gym and see guys over here lifting 500 pounds. I mean, I probably can do it, but I don't want to compete with y'all. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that, I'll shake your hand, good job. Yeah. I don't want no parts of that. I'm not trying to do that. But if it comes to what you're doing up here, oh, we, we, we got the same, like, this is no different than everybody has the same brain, it's just how much are you going to pour into it, how much are you going to obtain, how much are you going to absorb, because can't nobody take that from you. You know, physical things and things of that nature is, is a whole different conversation, but mentally and how you think and, you know, what you absorb and the time effort you put into the education that you put into yourself, we all have that same opportunity. Books are out here for everybody, you know, growth and internet and lessons and things that are like that are out here for everybody conversations that you want to have with are out there for everybody you know so it's really do you want to take the time to invest that in yourself so you can personally grow but now a lot of people want them they, they want you to tell them what to do instead of them trying to figure it out you know and um i've, I've always you know my, my, my parents always instilled a work ethic. And so I guess, you know, coming back to, th to that question earlier, it started at an early age. Um, and this is, this is how it started. You know, I got to a point where I wanted, I needed, I wanted money. I wanted to buy my own stuff. Parents were like, cool, you're gonna work for it though. So they gave me chores. And they gave me chores with dates and timestamps on when those things needed to be done. So I had to start developing some type of structure. Um, some type of discipline and there was consequences that came behind that and there were humbling uh, situations as well we had a floor kitchen floor that was probably about the size of this room my mom gave me a bucket she gave me a rag and she gave me a brush you would think I would get a mop <laughs> you know what I'm saying like give me a mop like let me mop this floor she gave me a rag a brush and a bucket and I would have to get on my hands and knees and scrub the floor. And then I started taking pride in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I felt good. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all better watch where y'all step. Like, take your shoes off. I got to clean this next Saturday. I started taking pride in it. You know what I'm saying? So, just thinking back now, like, that's kind of where that stuff came from, you know? And uh, it, w it was a discipline. You know, I had to have a trash. I, I remember all the trash had to go out on Tuesdays. I remember that still to this day. I was probably seven, eight years old. Had to be in the house before the lights got on. My dad was a very one word type person. He'd be waiting outside and the lights was flickering. I'm running. Hey, uh, you see them lights, don't you? Yeah, we said before the lights came on. Lights look like they on right now. They flickering, now they, they on. Came with consequences. So, you know, it, it was installed, it was instilled in me at a very young age. Hey, so, you talk about how you were cleaning the floor and you began to take pride in that. Mm -hmm. So like you were taking pride, at, from you cleaning the floor, you began to take pride in, I guess, the work. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not really the, necessarily the end result, but like, you know, this the work and your work ethic. Right. You know, and I also like how you said, you know, with physical things, yeah, you know, not everybody is like equal. Right. But like mentally, there's no excuse for somebody to be working harder than you, to right. have more work ethic than you. So 
how. I, that's the kind of, I had a conversation with my son every day before school. We talked every day. And I asked him, what are you going to be today? And his answer is a leader. And I explain that to him every, like every chance I get, we'll be driving down the street. And you know, you got the little kids out, no disrespect to anybody out there, but you got the little kids out in the corner selling water. I expect the hustle, y'all. At least y'all selling water, not drugs. But I asked my son, they like two, three years older than you, son. They, and, and I asked him, I said, in two or three years, is this how you want to spend your summer out here selling water, chasing cars down? No, that's not how I want to spend my summer. So I suggest that you make sure you go to school and learn everything that you can. And I tell them all the time, I say, I, I'll, I'll buy you anything that you want if you keep coming home with good grades, anything that you want. But you got to have that work ethic. And it's just drilling that in them, you know. And um, he's a scholar. He's been a scholar since day one. He's testing for gifted classes, you know, and he, he really has a pride in school. I didn't have that really growing up. I, I hated school. I, it wasn't, stuff wasn't clicking for me. But for him, it, it, it does, and we stay on top of him with, it, with that because for me as being a, a, a man and having a son, I want to make sure that certain principles are in play at a very early age because I too look at him and some of the things that he wants to do. And I'll give you an example, he wants some gold teeth for Christmas. And I'm thinking to myself, like, man, like, nah, not, not going down this route. But then I think, I go back and I think his time versus my time, I was in the MC Hammer and stuff like that. And the big thing was the big pants and stuff like that. There's a lot more rappers out here that the kids are seeing. and. That was his thing, so, so we got him some little fake gold teeth. He wore them one day, never wore them again. But he would, he want, he's, a, he's a kid, you know what I'm saying? He, and I want him to experience certain things to see if, is this what you want or is this what you want to be like? And, you know, I have the gold chains, I have the stuff that the rappers and all them have, but I asked him, I said, do you see daddy acting like that? No. Nah. I said, daddy went to school, these degrees, this is, that's what daddy did, you know? And, um, I always ask him, do you know, do you know what I do? He thinks I'm just like this famous person. I got all this money and, and uh, it, it's funny, you know, and I'm like, but if you apply yourself, you know, if you learn everything that you can, can't nobody take that from you. You know, the smarter you are, the better you're going to be in life. You know, the more you apply yourself, the, the better you're going to be in life. And um, I have that conversation with him every, every morning. Before we go off the phone. All right, dude, love you. What you gonna be today? A leader. All right, talk to you later. Man, that's powerful, that's powerful. <laughs> so, um, you're speaking of childhood. Thought you like, what were some of the most, I guess, painful situations that you've gone through? And how did they shape you? As a kid, um. But not kid, kid. Let's say the most impactful situations that were painful to you. Um. It's a good question. I think I didn't really, I, I had a, a great upbringing. You know, my parents were divorced and it never really affected me. And I tell my parents all the time, I don't even know how y'all was married. Like y'all are totally two different people. Um, but it never really affected me because my dad was always in my life. He worked 12 hour swing shifts. So he was always coming and going, um, but he was always there for my games. and things like that and I always had a relationship with them and my mom was always there. So I've always had a great relationship with them and a lot of people who, a lot of kids who go through broken homes feel torn between their parents. I've never experienced that. I never could relate to that because I've always had a relationship with my parents. So, you know, I, I never had a, a bad childhood. I think, you know, as I, as I grew um, and became a man, I started experiencing different things that affected me. You know, one of the things, you know, I was working so hard to, you know, be successful and lost my job twice out of, out of school. Um, got had a, the, one of the biggest popping gyms in Atlanta and gone within two years. Um, tore my Achilles in, around the same time. So those are different things I had to deal with that put me in situations where I had to think differently, move differently, 
um, think about the decisions that I was making to make sure I don't make those same mistakes again. Um, even with my Achilles, you know, like I said, I played basketball all my life and I was still hooping, you know, at the age of 36, like, with could still ball. And when I tore my Achilles, it, it made me stop and think, like, you got a business that you're running, you got an online business that you're running, now you got to sit down for at least a month and a half and not do nothing. But at the same time, I'm sitting, I keep putting this out in the, in, in the, in the uh, universe that I want to be a boss that, that I can sit down and, you know, I kept putting that out. And then guys like, sit your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for, but at the same time, it, get, it put me in a position where I had to depend on DJ, the guy who owns this gym, to run my gym. I had to put my trust in some other people. I had to all these people that were around me that I were building up or I was, you know, um, working with, I had to put, take my hands off and kind of, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, delegate certain things for them to do in hopes that it would happen. And a lot, everybody came through, you know, and it, it, it worked. So, you know, those were just pivots in, in, in my life and in my career. Um, that I had to deal with. You know, I was married to my son's uh, mother. And um, I tell people all the time, you know, I sacrificed a lot of stuff being, getting to this point. One of them was my marriage, you know? And um, it haunts me to this day to not be with my son. And it's not that, you know, it was anything had to do with him. Me and her just didn't, we weren't at a, a stage where we really took the time to work on us. Our pride was in the way. You know what I'm saying? She's like, I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't doing this. And I'm like, I ain't doing this. You know what I'm saying? Our pride was in the way. And um, it sucks, you know what I'm saying? Because that was not never the plan, you know, to, to come up here and do all this stuff and then lose my family in the same, in the same breath. So a lot of that stuff, you know, I tell people there's a lot of sacrifices that came with me getting to this point, you know, and uh, I wouldn't wish that kind of stuff on anybody. But um, we still have a good relationship. We still raise our son and um, thank God for that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of different things that come with it. You know, when I'm traveling three hours for a whole year back and forth every week, that's gonna take a toll on your relationship. And it did, you know, so, uh, and I was experiencing, you know, a whole different lifestyle. You know, I'm in Valdosta, Georgia, where it's country, you know, and it's college and military time. I come up to Atlanta and it's popping. You know, I'm rubbing shoulders with celebrities and, and it, you know, saying it's a whole different life. And I'm not used to it. And I wasn't ready. You know, I, I wasn't ready. And um, the cause of that, you know, affected my, my marriage. So. You know, I tell people, you know, sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for because there's going to be some sacrifices and consequences that come with your growth, you know, and you not saying it's going to be that uh, that meaningful, but there's going to be something that, you know, you're going to be affected from. Yeah. How did you um, how did you get past that mentally and emotionally? Uh, I don't even know if I truly got past it because it I would never I never wanted to not be there you know what I'm saying I never wanted to not we just didn't make it work and um, I don't know if I'll ever just get over it you know what I'm saying because it, it hunts me you know but uh, it's something that the fact that me and her still have a good relationship and we, we don't hate each other, it makes it a lot easier to cope with, but it's uh, it's not nothing that I can say I just got past. Yeah, I mean, I guess a better way to put that is like, cause I've been through, you know, breakups before and, you know, there's a window of time when it's like, you can't think straight, right. you know, you're going crazy. So like, when you were going through that period when it was really kind of hectic for you mentally. I dug more into my craft okay. to keep from losing my mind because it it will it will make you lose your mind like i and that's 
I'm a self uh, healer. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to that, this is when I get more into my craft. Like if, I, if there's stuff going on in my life that I really can't control, then I start focusing on the things that I can control. And this just makes it, for me it works. Yeah. You know, it, but it, it may also hurt the things that are going on that I can't necessarily control. You know, there, it may affect some of these things. So that's stuff that I'm working on, you know. Um, and it's, it's a selfish trait to have, but it's also, again, got me to this point. And again, I can't say that that's the right thing to do. So, you know, a lot of things that I probably should be working on and should be trying to handle when they, I don't like conflict. You know, when I see, I'm like, I'm going over here and focus on the stuff that I can handle because I ain't trying to deal with all this stuff over here. And I've always been like that. You know, I, don't, I just don't like drama. I don't like conflict um, in certain situations, I should say. Uh, me and you would never be out and I'd be like, oh, they about to beat you up and run. Like, I ain't that type of person. <laughs> I'll probably be the first one with it. You know what I'm saying? But with certain stuff, I'm just, I, I try to, I, I, I don't, I try to have, I always try to have positive energy. And, um, that's always been my goal. So when I feel like my energy is, is getting pulled to a negative side, I tend to run from it. Yeah, you decide to focus on it. Yeah, I can't, I can't do that. It's gonna throw me off my rocker. Let me get back to what I know I can focus on and stuff that I know I can control. Yeah. I mean, like you said, there's some instances where that's a good thing. Like I went through a breakup and I was running like 10, 15 miles a day and eating good, working on the program. So that's a positive, but it's something to it could be a negative as well. Right. So us men, man, we have a problem like <laughs> learning how to balance relationships. We suck. Yeah. We suck. <laughs> it's like I'm about balancing relationships. Day. Right. I'm just like <laughs> straight focus. Right. It's hard to have that balance. So. Exactly. I know what you mean. Um, so let me ask you this. How do you deal with criticism from like the people close to you? Or uh, not just criticism, but um Criticism, but also like a lack of enthusiasm. So like when you're telling them your big ideas and, you know, it could be, let's say, if you had a brother and he's just like, oh, you know. Um, I don't really, I'm not one to share a lot of stuff that I'm trying to do. Uh, I may ask for like, yo, what do you think about this? Um, and if I bring it to you once and, you know, you give me good feedback, whether it's good feedback, where it's critical or uh, it's like, you know, you're kind of into the conversation and it's, I wouldn't do that or that's a great idea, then I'm probably going to come back. If it's, you know, I come to you about something and you ain't really too much care about it, I ain't going to waste my time talking to you no more. That's my issue. Yeah, I ain't going to waste my time talking to you no more. Again, yeah, like... Again. So, I, and I, I get, this was, you know, with my prior marriage, you know, I always felt like instead of being someone to say that was a dumb idea, she was being my wife and like, you know, yeah, dude, go, go, go. Instead of saying like, that's stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you thinking? So you wanted, you I wanted, wanted that. that. I wanted that. I wanted the cheerleader. I wanted the, you know what I'm saying? I wanted the support, but I also wanted you to wake me up and say, yo, that's stupid. Like, let's think this one out a little bit. I needed that and I, and I didn't get that. And um, that's where I started, you know, pulling back from the relationship, which it hurt, it hurt us. And um, like we talk about it today and like, it's, we both agree, like we just wasn't, we didn't have the right type of people around us to, to help support it. And um, it, we're, at, we're at a place now. I mean, we, we're, we're still friends, we're still best friends. And uh, if we argue about anything, it's, it's about him. It ain't about anything personal. It's, we want more time with him type, type of thing. And I'll take those type of arguments, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, there's a love for our child and it's overshadowing, you know? so. And that, that we talked about that, it's like, we don't argue about anything else but this dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have no beef with each other. It's more so like, 
you said you're gonna be here at five, it's six o'clock, you on my time. <laughs> um, so when it comes to like getting feedback from, you know, like your team, you know, I've read that you gotta make sure that you're, that they feel comfortable enough to give you that feedback. Right. Like there's some people, if they don't have that, you know, the stomach for it, mm -hmm. people they're like really nice and sweet. I've dealt with that too. It's like, I want some people to kind of just be blunt, and just tell me the truth. Right. And if it's somebody they don't got the heart really to do it, it's like you gotta kind of baby them to tell them the truth. Like, it's okay, just tell me, just tell me. All right. You know, and an hour later after that, it's like, yeah, you know, it's sucked, I don't like this, I don't like that. It's like, dang. All right. They had me up there looking crazy. It, it, it's, uh, it's needed. You know, you have to have somebody that's gonna be your mirror and, and tell you what's good, what's, what's wrong. Um, and, and to keep it 100% honest and transparent with you because it's only going to help you help you out. And um, it's like my girlfriend now, like we're each other's mirror. I'm more of her mirror on the business side. She's more of my mirror on the personal side. And um, that's the, the whole me trying to run from certain situations. She's like, no, you're better than that. You're going to deal with this. We're going to sit here. You're going to talk about it. Like, you know what I'm saying, we're going to talk about this and, and making me have to face uh, certain things. And me on the other end, for her, I'm the business side, you know, like, you can do this, you're, you're, you're better than this, you have to start applying yourself, I'm giving you that push. Um, I see the work ethic, but you, you keep self-doubting yourself, you know what I'm saying, so being that mirror for them and, and I'm only saying this because I care. If I stop, if once I stop saying it, then you know I don't care no more. You know, so you know me in your ear constantly. You know, it gets annoying, but at the end of the day, you turn around like, no, I appreciate that because I I need to hear that. I know that was true. And um, you gotta have somebody like that around. You gotta have somebody because you don't. That's that's how you grow. So tell me about your your morning routine. You know, your daily routine. So. Uh, today was a different day, but on a regular uh, Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, I get up at four o'clock in the morning. Um, I do my cardio for about a half an hour, go to the gym, work out for about an hour and a half, come back, train a couple clients for maybe an hour, two hours. I might teach a class, uh, and then I have a period of time where I'm kind of either handling business, running errands, being a dad, being a boyfriend, being a coach, being a business, like a lot of different things. And then um, I try to clear my evenings just to unwind, but I'm always working. So it's like I'm either opening up another business or working another another project. So um, I know I always, you know, tell people and explain to people, you know, you got to get your sleep, you got to get your sleep. And I suck, you know, I suck. <laughs> And doing it, you know, but I'm trying to get to a point now where it's like, okay, cut the phone off, go to sleep, and pick up from where you started tomorrow. And uh, it's, it's a hard thing to do. But it, it's a lot of people ask me, I said, man, I'm still trying to figure that part out. Uh, why do you wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning? Because any other time wasn't working for me. You know, it would, if I would wake up later, then uh, I wasn't getting as much done. So it's like, you know what, let me get me out the way early and then I can focus on everything else. So, and I think it, it works for me. I, I do me in the morning. I focus on me first thing in the morning. And then by the time it's eight o'clock in the morning, I'm free to whoever and what business and what family and what, you know, wherever I need to go. Cause I've, I've taken care of my personal health and my personal uh, needs in, in the morning. Gotcha. So what happens if, like, how do you feel about yourself when you wake up, like after four, you wake up at like 5.30 one day, you know, you miss your alarm, like how does that make you feel? Uh, I don't really miss the alarm. I might wake up, I might miss the, the cardio, I don't miss the workout. So, so wake too late. yeah, I don't wake up too late, you know, cause I'm struggling. Like I do not like getting up in the morning, so. You know, sometimes I'm just kind of running behind, um, but I still give myself a, a window to get it all together. 
And I, I think I've gotten to a point now where I started giving myself time for situations and stuff to happen. Like this interview, I'll give you an example. I was gonna do it at two o'clock or 2.30 or something like that. And I'm like, you know what? I might need to move that back a whole nother hour because I still, something might happen. Yeah, yeah. And I still got here at like 3.35. So, <laughs> so you know, it's, it's, it's still trying to find out, you know, don't put too much on you. Don't put too much issues or too much on your shoulders that you can't handle. And just give yourself some type of balance. Yeah, I mean, that's been one of the biggest things that, like I, like I said, I used, to, and you know, I used to have like five events on one day, like going about food, to just work out boot camp, run a chess club, free fitness class in the morning, and maybe one other random thing, like shoot an interview. All right. And I'm running late for everything. Right. And everything is like, I'm just mid, I'm losing my mind, so I've learned, you know, nah, I mean, it's basically, you know, yeah. time to just not one thing at a time. Um, okay, so, um, the name of my brand is Better You Better Society. Mm -hmm. That was basically just inspiring people to be leaders, inspiring young men and women to be kings and queens, to be the best versions of themselves, like physically, mentally, and on a character level as well too. So when you hear Better You Better Society, like what comes to your mind when you hear that? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds kind of self-explanatory. Um, a better you kind of creates a better society is, is kind of how I take it. Um, the better you are, the better the people around you are, the better the surroundings, the, the better the, the energy that you know that you put off is it's better. You know, if, you, if you're down, you probably have a lot of negative energy around you. People don't really get attracted to that, but the better you are, a lot of people attract to that positive energy. So um, that's my take on it. You know, on, on what that what that sounds like, and um, sounds cool. Like I like it. <laughs> appreciate it. Actually, I have, um, I have a shirt for you too. Okay. Um, yeah, one of the things that like I'm really big on is like self accountability. You know what I'm saying? It's like other people may be messed up, maybe doing you wrong, but at least make sure that like you're doing right, right. Like, to the best of your ability. All right. And then you know, we can go secondarily kind of try to influence people to do the right thing themselves. But if I'm jacked up and I'm telling you what you need to be doing, it's like kind of a waste of my energy. Right. Because I have way more influence over what I can get myself to do than what I can get you to do. So that's one of my, you know, thoughts on it. That's pretty, uh, this whole concept, man, is, is pretty dope. And I think that, uh, that take on, on what you're saying, I think that, you you have to have some type of self discipline on yourself, um, especially if you're in place of trying to help other people. And and I, I think for for me, I always tell people, not you or me. Uh, I tell other people uh, all the time. I can lead you by you watching me better than I can ever tell you. You know what I'm saying? And that works for me. You know, like a lot of people can like they like to be talked to and things like that. I just like to show you like if I'm telling you to do this, you're going to see me actually do it as well. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Like I hate for people to tell me to do something and they don't do it themselves. So I'm always like if I tell you to do something, it's because I'm doing it and I know it works. And I, I will never tell people to do something that I haven't done myself. So like like for that to be one of my biggest pet peeves it's one of my strongest traits as well you know and I tell people all the time like don't tell me to do something if you ain't never done it or don't tell me to do something that you ain't gonna do yeah. if you gonna jump off the cliff then let me see you jump off the cliff I ain't gonna jump off the cliff what the hell make you think I'm gonna jump off the cliff <laughs> you know but if you gonna jump and you gonna tell me you gonna land and I see you jump and we had this conversation again I gotta jump you know what I'm saying cause hell you just gotta tell me how you landed <laughs> <laughs> Even with that, I feel like it, it it takes a lot of energy to talk about something that you're not doing. Right. And that energy that you're using talking about it is taken away from the energy that can be used actually doing it. Like right. If I'm talking to somebody like, yeah, you know, you got to wake up early. You should work out. You should eat. I'm just running my mouth, running my mouth, running my mouth, but I'm not actually doing it myself. First thing I should do is 
stop talking so much and then actually do it. Get myself together and yeah. then I could tell you about what I am doing. And that that's the I think one of the reasons uh my my online program is so successful is because I approach it from the client standpoint. There's nothing you can tell me that you're experiencing that I haven't experienced myself. I know exactly what you mean when you say you're tired of eating the same food all the time. Trust me, I know. So am I. I know exactly what you mean when you say I'm tired of getting up every morning. It's hard to get up in the morning. Trust me, I get it. So do I. You know what I'm saying? I understand when you say um, these workouts are hard, you're tired, you're exhausted. Trust me, I get it. You know what I'm saying? But I also have the same goal that you have as well. And when I wasn't applying these principles, I was never getting closer to that goal. And when I started applying these principles, I started getting closer to that goal. And over time, I've gotten to a certain place. And that's where I'm trying to get you if you just start being consistent in what you say you want to do. I get it, you know what I'm saying? I can relate, we can sit down and talk about it all day. But the difference is, what are you gonna do about it? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you gonna do about it? And I tell people all the time, like, it's cool to have issues and problems, but what's the solution? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't keep coming to me with a problem. What is the solution? Like, I got a problem and I'm trying to figure it out. Like, say that instead of, well, I got a problem. This, 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 and this. Okay, so what are you gonna do? I don't know. I, you still, that's, you're gonna stay there with that problem until you start trying to think of a solution. And we can, now we can talk and, and come to a solution, but you ain't about to drain me with your problem, nah. For what? I tell people that all the time, you ain't ready. And that's my slogan, SAFE, S-A-F-E. Ain't for everybody. I tell people all the time, my program is SAFE, but it ain't, it ain't for everybody. And it starts making sense when they go through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we idolize and we see these, these people in these certain positions. And then when we start, you know, getting in the mud and getting our feet dirty and getting some skin in the game, that perception or perspective starts to change. And you start asking yourself, do I really want that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I always tell people, man, you got to ask yourself, like, what are you willing to do to get to where you want to be? Everybody's successful at something. And whatever it is that you're successful at, you were dedicated to, you were consistent with, you, had, you made some sacrifices for it, um, and you were committed to it. It's what, everybody's successful at something. But whatever it is that you're successful at, all those traits fell in line or you wouldn't have been successful. You don't just trip and fall into success. You know what I'm saying? You might trip and fall into some money, but you don't trip and fall into being successful. That comes with work ethic, that comes with consistency, that comes with dedication, that comes with commitment, that comes with sacrifice. And that goes back to what you were saying too about making sure that you're passionate in what you're doing and you're fit. Right. You know? So, I think, how do you find, like, how does somebody find their passion? What do you have fun doing? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what do you actually have fun doing? Now, how do you turn this into dollars? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't work, you know? Like, I don't work, per se. Like, what I do is actually fun. Like, it's therapeutic for me to train people and get people to a, a different level in their life. You know I mean? It becomes a job and it becomes a career but it, I don't dread doing it, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I'm teaching classes, that's actually a fun time for me, you know what I'm saying? How many hours do you put into your business a day now, on any given day? 24 hours in a day, I'm probably about close to 20, 18, 20 hours of working. Okay, so you're working 18 to 20 hours a day on your business, mm. in, in your craft. Now, and that's, that's sporadic, you know? Um, so see like total hours? Uh, at least 10 to 12, okay. at least. 
And I'm willing to bet that that's easier for you to do than to work three hours doing something that you're not really passionate about. Oh, absolutely. Time goes by when you're doing stuff that you have an interest in. Yeah. This I interview, you know what I'm saying? It's an hour. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it felt like we just sat down. Yeah. So, you know, this is a... Uh, it's fun for me because I, I get to talk, you know what I'm saying? I get to share stuff that people have an interest in. That people are going to hear this. They're going to, you know, hear what I have to say if they even care, you know? And it may inspire somebody. It may drive somebody. It may get people to start thinking to move differently. And I tell people all the time, like, don't quit your job. Like, I just happened to lose my job. Don't ever just quit with no plan. I ain't had no other choice, you know? Um, Cause I, you know, the people all the time, I'm about to quit, man, start doing this. Like, no, don't, don't quit your job. Like, figure something out first. Like, <laughs> trust me, you want to have a plan before you jump over here. It's a lot different now than it was seven years ago. When I was like early into entrepreneurship, me and a lot of my friends, we were like that. You know, we just gonna quit our job. We just gonna jump into it. And now that I know the amount of strategic planning that it takes to actually be successful, I don't tell anybody to just quit your job. Nah. You know, cause you can. You better have that keep that job on the side and, and work on your craft a little bit. <laughs> like when you're first starting the business, you're not gonna be making that much money, and there's not really so much you can do in the beginning anyway. All right. Like there's a, like you can only tackle maybe one to two, three tasks at a time. All right. So this, so like let's say you know I'm doing my interviews and I have another job, I have to focus on just doing one. I can work a job and do interviews. Yeah. You know, and actually me working a job is gonna give me the money to buy the equipment and everything that I need right. to make these things as to invest in it. magical as they can. Then when it gets to a point where I no longer need the job because I'm getting paid from this, then I can uh, quit the job. But that goes back to that emotional, you know, people get emotional, they wanna make spontaneous and sporadic movements right. without really thinking, so. I think, uh, I don't know if you're going to ask, ask me this question, but I'm going to answer it before you do, if you had to plan it. Uh, I always get asked, what is the best piece of advice I can give people that are going into entrepreneurship or who want to own their and run their own business? So let me ask you, what is the best piece? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, the, the, the problem that I see with people is they start making a little money and our people for really. We start making a little money and we start spending a little bit of money. And I think the best thing for you to do is if you start making some money and you start making some ground, keep your lifestyle the same until those numbers drastically change to where you can start living a different type of lifestyle. Um, because I, I, I watch it all the time, you know, and I did it for a second. You know, I went through my first program. You know, I made like $16,000. That was a lot to me, you know, in, in, a, in a month. And I blew that sh You know what I'm saying? Like, I blew it to try to do it again. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm like, why did I just, where did it all go? You know what I'm saying? Like. I can show you where it went, but where, like, where did it really all go? And um, I'm at a point now where I make a nice bit of money, you know what I'm saying? But I invest so much of it back into the business because the goal that I have is much more bigger than the substantial part right now, you know? Um, I can rub shoulders with a lot of different people out there that, you know, showcase a certain type of lifestyle. But I can also look at their business as well and see that it's not being scaled and it's not growing. And that should always be anybody's um, that, that wants to be an entrepreneur, that wants to grow their business. You want to put yourself in a position where your business is scaling and you're not doing so much. So, you know, if you're constantly pulling money out because it made a little money, your, your business is never going to grow because you're never really investing back into the business. Um, I pay myself a regular salary e each month. I live a regular life. It's like everybody else. But I keep pouring 
hundreds and thousands of dollars back into my business. So it can grow on a bigger platform. So when I do say, you know, I'm ready to cash in, that cash in is like, now I can live a whole different type of life. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I explain that to people all the time, like, man, slow down, like stop spending all your money on stuff that's, you know, don't really mean nothing right now. And keep investing back into your business, grow your business, try to get your business to a different platform. Whatever you're making this year, you should be able to try to double or triple that next year. That should be your goal. And um, that should always be your goal. And if it doubles or triples, then that, then you, you know, pay yourself a little bit more going forward. And doubles or triples, then you pay yourself a little bit more. But stop pulling it all out. You know, if you make 100, you pull out 90 and just put 10 back in. Like, stop doing that, don't you? <laughs> like he bought you a watch before he bought you a house. That's backwards. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's backwards as hell, you know? So, I bought my first house at 23. You know what I'm saying? So, like like I said, a lot of stuff, I, I'm just not really, I'm not worried about what everybody else is doing. There's always been a goal in mind. There's always been things that I, I've wanted to do. I've always tried to put myself in positions where I had to make the right decision. What do you mean by that? You put yourself in positions where you had to make the right decision? I played basketball right out of high school. I could have went to a lot of different schools. I was all American Division II. And I knew me. I probably would still been in college to this day if I would have went to a, a HBCU, if I would have went to more of a <laughs> popping school. Because I've been wanting to party all the time. I know, I know my weaknesses and you know, so I went to a pretty much predominantly white school. I had to get to my books, you know what I'm saying? I hated school, but I put myself in a position where I had to succeed, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's stuff like that, like putting yourself in a position where I have to make the right decision, you know what I'm saying? Or because if I make the wrong decision, it's going to se severely affect the direction that I'm trying to go in. So, and then also it's like you're removing, your, you're not putting yourself in situations where it's going to be too tempting for you. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like I know there's a party going on over there and I probably shouldn't be going to no parties. I'm just gonna take my ass on. Like I probably shouldn't be here right now. Cause I am probably gonna make the wrong decision. And a lot of people don't have that type of self discipline or you know, they, they'll battle against the two inner people. I'm I know which one is the right one, like I mean that's big because I have a lot of friends and you know, um they'll wanna do something that I know is not really in the best interest for any of us. And they'll be like, Nah, we good, just it's like People are easy to lie to themselves. Yeah. Oh, just go to the party, you're fine. Like no one if you go to the party, you you got a girl, you probably gonna cheat on. Her. Right. You, you See, I, I, I make I make the wrong decisions personally. I never make the wrong decisions business wise. Okay. Like so, let, let me let me clear that. I I usually make the wrong decisions personally. Business wise, I always put my like I'm too busy business minded to ruin it because there's too many people depending on me in, in that aspect. Okay. Personally, it's just me. You know what I'm saying? Business-wise, it's, it's too many people, my son, you know what I'm saying, my daughter at this point now, you know, depending on me to make the right decision. I'll make some bad decisions personally, you know what I'm saying? I grow as a person, we all grow as a person, so let me clear that up. I try, I try to make better decisions personally, and um, that's when my girlfriend come to play, you know, she's, always in my ear trying to make sure that I'm a better person. Uh, Cause she's like, you want hell of a business, man, but you need to work on you personally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good to have that. Um, so you said something about uh, like scaling your business and you also spoke about your, the first program that you dropped. What made you want to drop that? Um, I needed some money. Uh, I wanted to see what was what was going to work like i had an idea of what i wanted to do and i just had to put something out there you know what i'm saying to see you know people's take on it and i, I accepted the feedback you know and i always, still to this day i always ask people like what do you like what don't you like like be very transparent like i need to know like give it to me all like i don't care how you think i'm going to take it or how you think i'm going to feel like let me know so i take that information we come back to the table Every program we drop is a better program. I just dropped my app the other day, but I haven't even announced it because I'm still 
sending it out to certain people, you know what I'm saying? I want, I want y'all to give me a feel for it. Like it's out there, it's nothing you put out is gonna be perfect, but I still want certain people to, to touch it. You know, is it working right? Is it stuff, stuff that I'm missing? Is word spell it right? Let me get all this feedback and then, then, you know, once I get all that, we fix all that, I'll do another trial run. Then, okay. Okay. then I'm gonna drop it. Got you, got you. Because there's gonna be somebody waiting, ah, he did this, he did my <laughs> So, you listen to your audience, and then you get the feedback from your audience, and that's that's kind of like where your inspiration to drop certain projects or launch certain programs, but that's where that comes from. Right. Okay, gotcha. Because I've built a community. Um, it's funny, that yesterday I went, uh, two days ago I went to a chiropractor and we did a live video. And uh, he is very informative on what he was doing, and a lot of people were interested to see the actual me going through the uh, the process and him explaining and certain things. This guy was way smarter than me, and he was just showing different things that he was doing where I wasn't as strong because of my body was wasn't aligned right. And he adjusted, and he's like, now you see the difference. People are actually seeing this, and then um, you know I posted on my page, and he's like, yo, he's like, you have one strong following he's like I gained like a thousand something followers but I've never heard somebody ask me what's the closest airport because I went to them I you know what I'm saying stamped this person's approval they want to have that same experience too he's like yo that's crazy how do you build a sense of community value um a lot of people are so worried about making a dollar. How can I get a dollar out of this person? How can I get a dollar out of this person? Instead of how can I gain this person's respect? How can I gain this person's trust? How can I add value, more value into this person's life? And the more value I add to a person's life, the more they're going to either want to work with me, the more they're going to trust me, the more they're, that they're going to, you know, want to spend money with me. Because I've given you so much value, you know what I'm saying? I've added so much, and I hear it all the time, man. It's like, yeah, I've been watching you for a year and I've learned so much from you. Now I want to do your program a year later. You know, that's funny because you're saying value now, and that even goes back to what you said at the beginning of the interview about your first client. She's giving you $30 a week, but you're giving her so much value. She's right. seeing progress. So that's like a constant with you. Yeah. I follow you. I see you were dropping live workouts almost every day. People are like, why you ain't? 20 minutes. They're like, why are you not charging for this? Still to this day, they're like, like, I'm like, yo. They're like, why are you not charging? I'll yeah. get corporate people. They're, they're them, you know you can charge for this and make money. I'm like, yeah, I know. And you doing it. I you know. know. DJ, but that, I'm like, yo, that's for free. Yeah, for every free. Day. And people be looking like, I'm not, I'm not doing all this for free. Well, it ain't for free, you know what I'm saying? Like, but they're experience, they're getting an experience of who I am. They're getting, you know, I give away free supplements sometimes, free gym stuff sometimes. And they're getting accustomed to my business and how my business runs. Like, damn, I ordered it on Monday, I got it on Wednesday. Instead of, I ordered it on Monday, I paid for it on Monday and I didn't get it to two weeks from now. You got it for free and got it three days later. It's an experience, you know what I'm saying, that they're getting and now I've, I've gained their trust. So, it's like I'm hearing you have an abundance mindset and a commitment to excellence. I just wanna kinda like identify what I'm hearing just for whoever's watching. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and, and that, that's it. Um, I, again, I told you I take bits and pieces from a lot of different things. Uh, I used to work at Lowe's, and one of the things that were on the wall, it said pride, P-R-I-D-E. Passion, respect, integrity, diversity, excellence. I felt like that, like I lived that. You know what I'm saying? Like I felt like pride and the acronym that, that they had, I put it in my gym in the wall, you know what I'm saying, on the wall. like. You gotta have a passion for it. You have to have integrity. Like, I'll tell people, don't question my integrity. You know, like, I'm only gonna do the stuff for the right reason. You know, I'm not 
that type of person. You know what I'm saying? Diversity, you know, excellence. You know, like, I pride, pride myself off of those, that, that, that acronym. So, um, I like acronyms, HEAT, you know what I'm saying? It stands for Hardcore Extreme Active Training. And um, that's just always been my thing. So, again, I've always took bits and pieces from other things and made it my own and, you know, formed it into what I wanted to present to the world. Gotcha. You see what works in you. Yeah. You incorporate it into your own thing. Got gotcha. you. The interview is coming to an end. Now, can you give me, talk about leadership. Like, what are some leadership qualities, or what are some qualities that good leaders have? Um, as many as you want. I think all good leaders had to follow at some point in time. Good th yeah, um, I think all good leaders have to have gone through the things that they're leading in, you know, and really felt and dealt with those types of experiences that got them to that place that they're leading from um, a passion for for what they're doing um, i mean i can say just i start naming off words you have to be motivated you have to have a passion you have to uh, be committed you have to um have integrity you have to be diverse in, in how you're thinking you have to have a certain mindset you have to have a certain work work ethic. You have to have a certain drive. Um, you also have to be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's funny. I, I fight this with my mom all the time. You know, she's she's older, so her perspective on things are a lot different than me. And um, I'm who I am. You know what I'm saying? I will never try to be anybody different. You know, and. Um, that's what I like about myself. You know, you look at me, I got tattoos everywhere. I got tattoos on my face and all kind of stuff. But you sit me down in the business, I mean, I have all the credentials as well as a guy who doesn't have them. So we can judge a book by its cover or we can really get into who this person really is. Um, and I, I just, I, I, again, this is why I said the goal for me was always to be the next beach body is because this ain't accepted in society. You know, I walk up behind somebody, they'll probably get scared of me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm probably the nicest person you, you'll ever meet. You know, um, educated, you know, if I got two degrees in four years. But looking at you would not think that, you know. Um, how I move, how I talk, the way I dress. You wouldn't think just on the street, I have a seven figure business, multiple businesses. You wouldn't think that, you know, you wouldn't think that I'm in the stocks. You wouldn't think that I'm in the real estate. You wouldn't think none of this stuff if I'm just walking down the street. Like, it's just another, that's cool, I'll be that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, this is who I am. You know, and my mom, she always like, you gotta, you know, watch what you say. No, nah, this is who I am, this is how I talk. If you ain't like it, just hit the unfollow button. If you don't like it, you ain't gotta be around me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here to please people. I'm here to be who I am. And if people are attracted to that, then they are. If they're not, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, the older generation was always, you know, trying to mold you to what society should think and see what you should be like or what you should look like you know we shouldn't wear braids we shouldn't dread up our hair we should that's my culture why shouldn't i do that you know you why do i have to do all this stuff just to you know please somebody else now i'm gonna do what i want to do and i'm gonna please me i'm gonna live my life the way I want to live it, live it, and I don't care what nobody says about that. Like, I can control that, and I'm glad I lost my two jobs because although I have that leadership mentality, I have that want to grow mentality, 
I was also caged in to working for somebody and, and, and having to respond and answer to somebody and be the best that I can be to grow that person's business. So I'd be the best person I can be and grow my own damn business. You know what I'm saying? And like, like I had to realize, like, I hate that I lost my job. Like, it's, it's still, man, I, would, I probably would still been at Lowe's if I hadn't got fired. But it also brought out a different part of me that, you know, still to this day, I'm, I, it shocks me because it's like, man, I, I never in a million years, you know, that I, would I ever think that I would be here especially not where I came from, you know what I'm saying, and the stuff that I went through, never, never in a million years, never in a million years. I knew I was gonna be good at something because I, I just had that, you know, type of demeanor, but not to this, this type of level. You know, I don't even brag or talk about the type of money I make, but to me, I sit back and I'm, shocked you know what I'm saying like what <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I remember saying I wanted to make six figures like that was huge to me I'm like when I'm 30 I'll make six figures like that was that was my goal my goal now is different numbers that I would never bring up in the conversation like people don't talk these types of numbers like almost six, six, six figures, seven figures. And like my goal, like, cause seeing what I can do now, like I told you before, now how do I double that next year? Cause I can always be better than I was. I can always do more than what I was. So my drive now is, okay, now how do I duplicate this process? How do I, if I can do this once, I can do it twice. I could definitely do it twice. Cause I could have worked harder or smarter. So if I did it once, I could damn sure do it twice. I just gotta figure that part out. Gotcha. So every year, these numbers is growing. I'm like, okay, these goals are starting to change. You know what I'm saying? Like they're really starting to change and I'm really starting to look at things differently, you know? And uh, I tell people all the time, like I'm really not, I'm not, I like to train, but I, I don't want to train. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, I don't want to be nobody's trainer anymore. I'll train people because I actually have a passion for some of my own old clients. I have a connection with them, um, or if it makes sense to do it. But I'm so far removed from the gym and personal training. I'm invested in my business and how do I scale my business? How do I make this better for more people? You know, how do I create this to where this is the one-stop shop for everybody to go? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my own, I don't, you ain't gotta call me the best trainer in the world, because I'm not. You know, I ain't gotta have the best program in the world, because I probably don't. But what I offer you, you ain't gonna get nowhere else. And I can pridefully say that, because I've seen, like I'm studying all, all these other things that are going on. So, you know, that's where I'm at, you know. I'm, I'm not trying to be number one trainer in Atlanta. I'm not trying to be, had the biggest class. And I was, I was, there was a goal at, at some point in time, but that's no longer the goal. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I'm no longer doing, looking this way. I'm kind of damn near having 360 vision of how do I make everything around me grow? How do I make all these people around me better? And, um, that's kind of where I'm at right now in life. <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm soaking it all in, man. Like I said, you're somebody that I look up to, so I'm just, everything you're saying, I'm just, you know, analyzing it. Yeah, it, it, it's a lot, man. It, it's a lot. And it, it uh, certain situations put you in a position where you, you kind of think and view life just differently. And, um, but I've always had an end goal, you know, and, um, that in grow has grown to other little components being added on to get to that point. So you like you always had like a big vision. Mm -hmm. It's always kind of like I think that's where self esteem comes from, and I think that's what makes people confident. It's like when you have a big vision and you know you're destined for greatness, you will talk. 
and you act differently. Yeah, you move different. Like, yeah, I'm somebody. You know, I might, it might not look like it now, but I know for a fact before I leave this earth, I'm going to achieve something big. All right. So, um, and that's the thing. If if that's how you feel about yourself, you just need to do that. You need to make somebody else believe that. Because once you make somebody else believe it, then it becomes a tumbling effect. And that somebody told me that one day, and it just always stuck with me. Said, "I believe." They said, "Verban." They said, "I believe in you so much because you believe in yourself that much. I have no other choice but to believe in you." She was like, "Cause look at this." She was like, "People believe in you because you really believe in the, you know what I'm saying the stuff that you're doing, and you prove it." And then that's all I tell people. That's all you gotta do, man. If you can prove your worth, if you can pr prove how much you believe in yourself, it's contagious. And people are attracted to that kind of stuff. Appreciate it, man. Um, no give, give your no Instagram, problem. your information. Y'all can uh, y'all can follow me on Instagram at I am the real DP. You can check out my uh, online business, the Heat Heat Extreme. That's H E A T X T R E M E. A supplement line is Heat Performance. My online program is Heat Challenge. Just dropped a new clothing line well, it hasn't dropped yet but by the time this come out it's probably gonna be it's probably gonna drop it's 720 s-e-v-y i'm not s-e-v-y-e-n the number 20 it's my daughter's birthday um we just spelled it a little different so that's the clothing line coming out make sure you guys go check that out i appreciate it man, well done, man. i appreciate you i definitely got a lot from what you were saying cool. so, um, everybody be blessed have an amazing day be a leader be great you want to motivate them? Hey, man, just, uh, my, I think my biggest thing to say to anybody is never give up on your dreams. There's going to be a point in time where you're going to want to throw it all away. You're going to want to give up. You're going to want to fold. Uh, if you believe in your dream that much, keep pushing. Keep pushing. It's, it's, it's going to work. It's going to work. Um, just don't give up on yourself and keep moving forward. That's all I got. Yeah, appreciate it, man. How does